Hello everyone, I Sanjana welcome you all on the behalf of Team Hack Odisha to this, to this yet amazing, amazing session, Project Showcase, brought to you by Hack Odisha 3.0, WebWiz, and ID Routela, sponsored by Quine, AlgoZenith, Fasten, and AlgoWars. So now we'll be starting the Project Showcase where each team will demonstrate what they have built, they'll ex and they'll uh, share the screen uh, or as if they wish to, and they'll explain what they have built each team will be provided a maximum of six minutes to showcase what they have built. And our core team members are present here who might ask a few questions on what you have built and how you did it. So at first, we'll start with Team Sri Jagannath. And the name of the project is Med Ed R. Uh, team Sri Jagannath can start sharing the screen and showcase their project. Uh, team Sri Jagannath, are you ready? Team Shri Jagannath, are you ready to present your project? Uh, is team Soul Celestia ready to pre present their project? Is anyone there from the team? Uh, okay, Kinjal, are you ready to pre present your project? So now team Soul Celestia will present their project, namely Celestia Med, Stellar Med. Excuse me. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I am from Team Jagannath. Actually, uh, I was not having the access to share my screen, and everything was disabled. Okay. Okay, uh, Nupur, uh, you just stop sharing the screen first. Yeah, I am from Team. Okay. I'm from Team. So Team Shri Jagannath, uh, uh, you just share the screen and showcase the project. Yeah. You'll have a total of six minutes to present. Yeah, actually, I don't have the access to share my screen. Still, we could give him the access. Excuse me, man. I have a doubt. Can I ask? Huh. Uh, in the chaos, I forgot to fill the showcase form. Can I showcase now? Because I have a project in DevFolio has an audio glitch. Show so I want to showcase here and uh, play my project here. So am I eligible? No, we haven't got the access. Uh For the person asking just to showcase the project now, uh, you can do it if at last we have the time, if the time permits are the last. Yes, access. Please. Okay, ma'am. Access. Uh -huh. access Actually, the form the deadline was 8 5, and during that, the there was chaos of submitting the project. So I just forgot to 
Uh, okay, so it's fine. Uh, we'll uh, we'll first go with the people who have filled the form. They'll first uh, showcase their projects, and at last you can do it. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, who hasn't got the access? Uh, still, I haven't got the access, ma'am. So, yeah, try now. Go. Yeah. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yes, it's visible. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. We are from Team Jagannath, and in this hackathon, um, Hack Odisha 3.0, we have built an app where we can display the medical model of the um, of the things. For example, here in the app, we have put dental and human autonomy. In dental, we have uh, some of the items like teeth and muscles present in the mouth. And in the human autonomy, we have like um, mus muscular female autonomy, uh, female anatomy, X-ray torso, and human skeleton. So this app is made for medical people who want to pursue their education and uh, who are into medical field. For example, if we say, so this is a hum uh, X-ray torso where we can see the heart, and this is uh, we upper one is a 3D model, and down one is a detail about the model, like about the studies. Also, we can see the 3D model in our view also. So we can we are uh, we can look into many of the uh, 3D models. Like this is the human skeleton where we have uh, this is specially for the muscle in the jaw. Also, this is a female anatomy. Also, we can view this one in our environment too using AR, augmented reality. So we are going to view this one. In just a minute. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, okay, yeah, for example, this is a normal uh, female anatomy where uh, we can see the model. Also, uh, we have many of the models like uh, this lateral uh, pregnant muscle also, we will display this one also. Yeah, for example, yeah, this one we have where we can uh, display the model and actually this one is this one we made to uh, make the people more easier to learn about the model, 3D model and all. With the help of 3D model, the people can uh, learn it, uh, like learn the project and they know what to do, like in medical field. So um, our main aim of this project is to uh, make the learning more clear and more easier for the people. And also this 3D modeling with the applic mobile application is not implemented before. If we compare, like, if you consider this one as a business model, uh, we have some of the little uh, like competitor, which is like Baijus, they just show the 3D model. But here we have the access of the 3D model and we can view the model however we want. Also, we are planning, like actually uh, this is not implemented before, so we are planning for a patent for this one. And uh, we are planning to uh, like elaborate, like collaborate with some of the companies who are into educational field. So this will help the medical people to go through more detailed about the models and all, like what they are going into it. For example, the dental people, the dental people, who, those who are into dent, dental and all, they will get to know more about the things and all. They will get to know more detail about the model, that what what it is there, what it's not there. Even for uh, even it's same for the other things also. Like this is a skeleton view where uh, the person can view each and everything, each and every detail of the skeleton. And also with the help of AR, this will make this this is made more easy, and it will help the medical student to be. Uh, it will help our uh, current generation to grow more than the current situation. So this one we made to make the old generation study to make it as model. So that's all about our project. Thank you. Uh, any questions you can ask. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you uh, for your presentation.
I'll ask the core team members if they want to ask any questions, they can ask. Okay. All right. Uh, could you explain a bit more about uh, uh, what tech stack did you use and what all things did you implement it? Like, how did yeah. you implement everything within the 36 hours? Like, what challenges did you face? And which were the parts that take, took the longest to implement? Okay. Um, at first, um, this the tech stack is uh, we are having the 3D model, which is in GLB file, and we are using Flutter with uh, ARKit. Like, ARKit is a Flutter package where we can uh, use the AR model. So uh, the problem we faced is for making the 3D model and all. So our team met, uh, he has built two, like within 36 hours, he have, like, he have built two to three models. And some of the models we have, uh, like, we have buy it from online. Like some of the uh, companies are there who make 3D models from there we buy it, like the skeleton one. So we have, we have this one stored in our uh, app in the SRC file. And we are being using AR like using AR package with Flutter. We are doing this like using AR kit. Like I mean, uh, we have downloaded the model. We have saved it there, and uh, using Flutter AR kit, we are displaying the model into a three D view. All right, makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I'll have the other judges have a question for them. So now we'll uh, move to the next team to present their project, which is Soul Celestia, and name of the project is Stellar Med. We'll allow you to share the screen, and then you can pre present your project. The person who's presenting Soul Celestia can raise their hand. The person who is supposed to like uh, present their screen, just raise their hand. So we'll allow them to share the screen. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. So I'm sharing my screen. Yes. So is it visible? Yes, the screen is visible. So yeah, hello everyone. So this is Team Soul Celestia from uh, NIT Routel. And this is our project, StellarMed. So we have built a remote patient monitoring app along with ML models integration. And uh, we have built a page, uh, a web page, which has the login for both our doctors and the patients. So uh, first we will explore the doctor page. So if we go to the doctor page and login, mm -hmm. uh, this login is implemented using Firebase and the front end is built using React. So, so on logging in, in the doctor page, we can see we have a, a simple dashboard along with a calendar implemented. And then in the patient patients list page, we can see that all the patients that are registered in the doctor can be seen in the, and these are all fetched from the Firebase in real time. On viewing, we can see the patient's current, uh, like the medical report, the patient's uh, like basic IDs, and also we can monitor their heart rates. So this heart rate monitor, like when we click on it, this like takes us to a hyperate website, which we have implemented like using a app called hyperate, which is available on the iOS. And we have actually, we're actually fetching the data real uh, in real time from the, uh, from the watch we have. And so that's it from this side. We also have a chat feature where the patients, family members can chat with the, uh, doctors. And also we, and also this is all about the, uh, doctor page. So now let's sign out. This, this also the sign out feature, which is actually implemented using Firebase also. On signing out, we have the patient page also. So we can go to the patient page. And in the patient page, on signing in, we come across a similar framework. 
this only the addition to this is that the medicines which are prescribed to the patient that is also visible and so that's it so on signing out we also have the ml model which is posted in differently in the uh, with using the streamlet it has uh, different parameters which the doctor can enter uh, and on entering and uh, like clicking on predict the prediction comes out that what are the chances that patient has a heart disease according to what their data uh, is so this is implemented using scikit learn and also uh, it also has uh, it has many ml models integrated in the same pipeline and uh, which is the, the which is the best model that the highest accuracy is being shown in the front so that's it and uh, the main problem which our app solves is that the regular visits or the recurrent visits of the patients can be reduced of the doctor to the patients can be reduced also the communication gap which uh, which is created between the hospital and and the patient family members that can also be reduced so that's it for our presentation thank you we are open to questions okay hi kenyan uh, can you just keep sharing the screen i'll have ask some questions okay yeah Is it visible? Yeah. Okay. So can you please please log in as a patient? I have a very basic question there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll ask you a very basic question. Uh, yes. So with patients, what happens is if a patient is of a higher age, like about 60, 70 or something like that, they have a very basic tendency of losing track of time for their medicines and the dosage they have to take and i don't see the dosage around medicines or the name of medicine that you have mentioned in their dashboard panel oh yeah uh, yeah actually so uh, like this is uh, actually we uh, didn't consider that initially this uh, can mm -hmm. easily be added using uh, the in the firebase like we can add different functionalities in the firebase we have the medicine reminder we actually planned on adding the time also in which it should be taken but due to time limitations we couldn't implement it we actually planned on implementing the time on at which it should be taken as well as the dosage but we and also as a like to-do list on each time how much it should be taken it should be like cancelled out each time on each day. so that was also our plan but we could not implement it oh okay okay great i get the time limitation and makes sense also okay. we saw your video yeah. There was a good sense of humor in the patient details. We'll give you a benefit of doubt there. So okay. thanks for presenting. Okay. And we can move to the next one. So next we have uh, uh, Swamiji Datta. And the neighbor of, uh, Kinjal, please mute your mic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the name of the project is Blindside AI. So, Swamiji, please raise your hand so that we can allow you to present your screen. Okay, so you'll have six minutes to present. Uh, hello, I am not getting the screen share option. Yeah, now I've got it. It in some time. Yeah, so hello everyone, I'm Shomajit. I'm representing the team SUS coders. What we have built is a virtual assistant for the visually impaired people. This helps blind people in their daily lives. And it has a very simple UI so that you can use it with the just with, with just click of a one button. And it is operated with the help of voice commands. Suppose you're blind and you want to go outside. You need to grab your walking stick and go. And you are not sure whether a car will hit your hit you or a bike so we have designed a road assist feature here if i click and say how can i help you i want to go outside entering road assist mode let's embark on your journey person in front it of is you. detecting that i am in front of person it. in and front of you if i move to the right person in front of you 
person to your right person is in the right person to your right same thing if i move person to the left to your right it will direct there is person, person to, to your the left. left now what about person cars person to your left person in front of you person in front of you yeah person so if in a front car of comes you. in front of you um, person in front of you car to your right it will detect the in car front of you. and the person car in front of you person to your left car in front of you person to your left so this basically uses person a yolo front of you. wi-fi model road assist mode has ended yeah this is a yolo wi-fi model uh to detect whether the uh, object is present and we have also added some classification extra classification so that it can detect whether it's in, on the right side in the front side or on the left side now what if you go uh, go to a shop and want to buy something you have to feel through the currency notes but you can't see it so we have designed the features so that it will help the blind people to detect which currency notes they have so we'll click here how can i help you which money am I holding? Face your camera towards the note. This is a 50 rupees note. So it will detect which note it is. If I try with another note. How can I help you? Which note is this? Face your camera towards the note. This is a 200 rupees note. So it can detect all denominations of the Indian currency. Now, you're blind. You can't see. The, you can't read the addresses or the signboards where you are. You want to know where exactly you are. You want to know your location. So you will just click here and ask. How can I help you? What is my current location? Your current location is Jail Road, Kosapur, Kolkata, Kolkata District, West Bengal, 70002, India. So it basically detects my coordinates and sends it to a map API, which returns the address. So it works like this. Now, if you meet someone, your relative or a friend, but you can't see them or you're not very sure whether they are the same person. So you can just ask your virtual assistant. How can I help you? Who is this person? Face your camera towards the person. This is Sonia Jet. So it detects me and I have trained it with me and one of my teammates. So we need to train those people, uh, the close relatives, and it can detect easily. Uh, and it will be helpful for the blind people to understand who is standing in front of him or her. How can I help you? Now, if you face with an accident or something. Face your camera sorry. towards the person. How can I help you? Yeah. So now if you face with an accident outside and you need help, so we'll just need to click here and ask. How can I help you? I need help. Sending an alert message to your nearest hospital. So an alert message is automatically sent to the nearest hospital. And you can see uh, it here. I can... Wait. I'm just turning on my video. This is the message I received here. I can't show it on my laptop. It has the exact coordinates of my location and the address too. So the hospital and ambulance can reach my location easily. And this is mostly operated by voice commands. So any blind person can use it. And it has a simple UI, only one button. They need to click it and it will work like that. Okay. That's all. That's for the presentation. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Hey, Swami. Yeah. Hello. All right. Uh, I had a few questions. Like you, just, yes. you mentioned about that uh, car thing. Uh, yeah. What if on the road? You know, in Indian roads, there are a lot of things. For example, moving cars. Sometimes yes. there are things which you can't really call a vehicle or a car. So, yeah. how much can your application detect? Like, for example, there is just. Uh, a goat moving in the road. 
so can the application detect that or how much what are the what's the depth yeah so for now i have just limited the number of classes to what i can find on the road usually but i can add more classes and in some cases if there are something beyond the classes like uh, a small van type of thing which is not present in the model i can just take lots of pictures and train with it the yolo i can customly train it so it will be able to detect that too so i can just keep on adding classes and make it suitable for indian roads also same for goats horses cows all right yeah makes sense totally but let's say um, your model had for example uh, a vehicle let's say a tata nano which is not in your model so will your application just detect and um, label it incorrectly or will your application completely not detect it uh it might confuse it between a car or is it, is it a small truck but it will detect it for sure i can show you also all right whether it's okay this is in the picture how can i help you let's go outside entering road assist mode let's embark on your journey person to your right person to your right car to your left car in front of you car in front of you yeah so it detects that's just car, car in front of you okay. person in front of you road assist mode has ended okay what about the currency thing like have you trained it currently for only 200 rupees note or can yeah, it detect no. all the old coins new coins or something like that it can detect anything in the indian innovation only notes i have not trained for the coins yet okay, because okay, coins are quite sense. tactile uh, so they can feel it i guess and it's only for the notes yeah. i can train it yeah. for further purposes all right your point does make sense uh, it's tactile so it's not really adding anything okay could you uh, dive a bit deeper on the implementation uh, like how have you implemented everything how does it all come together okay uh, so i began by using the pre trained yolo model which comes with it and there were already classes like cars buses trucks bicycles and everything i used that and uh, made that uh, connected with a fast api and my team met they are made the front end part in react js he picks up video frames every uh, every frame in one second and sends it to my api and the model processes it and detects that whether it is a car or something then it returns the same thing back to the react and it shows it there it in fact says with the voice like this and in terms of the currency i just downloaded the data set from kaggle and i trained it with through google collabs and that was a custom model same thing from my uh, for my facial recognition i took lots of pictures of me my old pictures current pictures and trained it in the same way via google collab and overflow for the location thing i have used uh, map api which collects my current coordinates from my gps sends it back and sends back the uh, location the address and for the sms alert thing to the hospitals uh, so i have used a uh, software called twilio which auto generates sms for me i also collect the gps coordinates and the locations and i send it to the hospital so that they can take action and come as soon as possible all right yeah totally makes sense uh, yeah. one final question just from uh, just i was wondering that uh, the application seem more suited for mobile phones rather than yeah. a website so why did you guys not opt to build a mobile application yeah or was so it we... because a uh, limitation of your tech stack yeah that is the problem i know back end and machine learning and my team mates they knew react now we are planning to move it to react native or something but surely we were plan we will move it to an app because it will be more suitable for an app it will be more accessible everyone who has a smartphone every visually impaired people could be able to use it they can just download okay. and they don't need internet connection also because the models are already present inside all right makes sense okay let's end our discussion here because there's a lot of other people who have to present all right thanks so it was an amazing project so now next we have a uh, soft flow from uh, presenting the project
इंटेलिजेंट रिक्रिजेट सिस्टम सो टीम मेम्बर्स ऑफ सॉफ्ट लो अच्छा यू हैव ऑलरेडी रेज योर हैंड सो विल अलाउ यू टू प्रेजेंट द स्क्रीन Uh, members of soft flow can you raise your hand yeah good evening to everyone uh, so i am a person i am nothing but from my team so i am here to present my idea so i hope uh, screen sharing option is not available to me it will be available in some time sure you uh, just raise your hand yeah that's fine Yes. Now you can present this video. Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jagdish Swaran, and uh, I'm I'm representing my team, Softflow. So here we come up with an idea of intelligent recruit system, which is simply nothing but an AI-powered interview assessment platform. Before getting into the content, I'm here to um, introduce my team. So myself, Jagdish Chauhan, our team lead, and I'm managing the AML part of this project. And my teammates are Sanjeev uh, CS and Sanjeev V. Both are developing a front-end and back-end work related to that our project. And uh, Mr. Venkatesh Chauhan, I'm his academic coordinator for this project. And we belong to Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology at Asana Kambatu. So, getting into the problem. So, as a final year student, uh, many college students are in, uh, final years. They will be waiting for the company campus interviews to get selected. However, if you are a person with a great technical knowledge and something you have gone deep through the knowledge, if you lack in place of soft skills or how, uh, especially how you represent yourself to the recruiter at that time. that uh, depends most the way how you present yourself to the recruiter which means how you impress him at that particular interview of 30 minutes that mainly matter so even uh, many college students uh, suffer in that that was the main problem we uh, also faced in our institution and we will be um, figuring out those problem statement so that's what our problem statement is and even though the traditional methods like mock interview and something uh, from a, a private agency does not in the record uh, conditions uh, which includes uh, it cost too much uh, of money if a person with low confidence level he or she would spend around half of the institutional uh, fees for his mock interview that was not the right practice so with the advancement of technologies like artificial intelligence there is a need for this uh, problem uh, to address it so here with the team softflow proposed a solution which is an ai powered interview assessment and assistive platform named recruits that provides a personality score based on how the job suitable to you and how you are person, uh, professionally fit to that job so it uses your um, like images videos and audio which means uh, you will be providing a uh, you will be presenting a mock interview in front of a system that uh, using ai and um, some facial recognition and certain systems it will analyze your how uh, your skills align with the job so a personality test would be taken virtually that will analyze your facial expressions which means the it also analyzes your uh, boldness and uh, clarity and uh, uh, how you present yourself so and also uh, as a result of analysis it provides an in depth result analysis uh, considering how much well you are in that sector and uh, how do you uh, need to improve yourself using generative ai so the presented solution uh, will be uh, diagrammatic and it could contain all the necessary information and also we will be providing some of the suggestions to improve yourself in that uh, how to improve from to the next level and how you will be uh, at the before test and how you are till now so this was the overall suggestion given so now what is the idea generally now the available um, assessment modes are like soft skill modes like you are given a 75 to 100 questions to attend and after that uh, they will be analyzing based on the test scores based on so that is not the actual uh, method for uh, analyzing the personality or a soft skill of a person so you need to give, uh, provide a env uh, environment where you could take a mock interview you should analyze his or uh, um, facial recognition and voice tone how bold he is to the um, how to say how bold he is to the recruiter and how confidently he is speaking to the recruiter that's the main thing in the interview 
so here is the application code of a program where a user must sign into the application um, and uh, he can uh, start the mock interview by turning on the video and uh, we must also have some terms and conditions where the uh, we'll be ensuring the safety of a uh, person's interview by once uh, if the score is visible the uh, entire video in the database will be deleted that's where uh, we'll be ensuring here the main so it starts recording your video and it will it will be analyzing your face and how you put present and um, it consists of uh, mainly pre-trained uh, models for facial recognition and uh, voice tone so that generates and classifies and provides you the final result so mainly the text stack used uh, react js for front end express js and mango db for the back end uh, storage purposes uh, machine learning and uh, and uh, some other uh, artificial intelligence related libraries and stacks for the facial recognition and voice uh, assistant features like and we are mostly using generative ai uh, to generate suggestions to interact how a human would interact and suggest to provide a, uh, suggestions for you to improve yourself and past api we will be concerning with the security and past uh, than, uh, api responses and here comes our business model canvas as while developing we could also uh, run uh, some of the we have googling some of the stuff where uh, how is it available or not so we found that uh, most um, companies are not pro uh, most institutions are not providing this much of a in power interview assessment so here come up the business model canvas of uh, providing uh, our application converting this into a, a, a market venture so it could be a great idea to uh, educational institutions so this is a uh, business model canvas where we could generating revenues through the product usage and p for personality assessment test and subscription model so as a result of using this application we could get a, a student can get an increased clarity of how to, he could represent himself for, um, to the recruiter he can boost his confidence and uh, the efficiency uh, how he represent himself will be increased and better decision making skills so these are our prototype model so yeah, this is the main home page of our application. So as a user, I'm yes. logging here. Hello, your time for presenting the project is over. Like Sorry, can you provide me extra two minutes uh, since it's a uh, important thing? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll, you can go for the okay, I'll one give minute. you one more minute. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll complete it in a... So using this restroom, we will be asking for skill set for generating uh, some questions based on this. So after providing this, you will be directed to the result page. Uh, I am now interacting with you. The test course uh, may not be accurate since uh, no, it is a 36 hours hackathon. Uh, we did something where we couldn't sleep, so our confidence level would be low. So this was the test page where we could able to do the assessment and the questions are available in the left side. So once after uh, the test ends, uh, it processed, uh, generally the process takes place in the back end and it will provide you the personality score. This would be uh, given to enhance the user interaction to what is doing so yeah this is how your eye contact is there and how confident you speak and the clarity of voice and how bold you speak so uh, this is based on our uh, trained model so the problem we faced is the data we can't get a proper data for an interview candidate perspective so and this suggestion uh, could generate a short term uh, how your uh, output came for the for your role and the, if you if a person you need a uh, i'll have to stop you right here yeah because you are going over time and there are other people as well in this session who have to present their ideas yeah uh, all right please uh, stop your demo sure. i just have uh, one question from you uh, no, sure. when did you actually start working on this project so mainly we uh, how to say for a week before we thought of an idea how the placement uh, were in our college and what is the main problem so we will be discussing and we will be thought of an, uh, generating a, a solution for the problem 
so as a now uh, this uh, hackathon came and uh, we are uh, as a, as we were in holiday we hope this was the nice time to start and we have started and we have implemented some of the uh, basic front end parts and for the back end we have implemented which was basic completely so we have been trained it till uh, extent for a uh, practical uh, uh, real world application we, we have uh, done the model which was sufficient to us that's it. Uh, all right seems to be a good answer uh, i just have one follow up question yeah. uh, you mentioned in your presentation that you implemented generative ai in the tech stack part uh, what exactly did you implement in generative ai so generative AI is uh, what mainly is uh, if as a result if you could provide a um, session which means uh, uh, for a percentage of uh, mark uh, percentage of score you could generate the same text that will not be nice generative ai is a sense which means it should interact and uh, communicate with the user to improve his or her uh, skills and how could you improve uh, in student perspective of view it should be different from stu uh, uh, student to student or sorry to interrupt thing. but uh, i don't mean to ask uh, what is generative ai i mean to ask you like what model did to uh, implement here or what is the model uh, where did you implement the model or what model did that is already so we are working in that used. and uh, we got some uh, few bugs there so we have uh, started to implement that sir okay so in your current project generative ai or anything any model of generative ai is not yet implemented right yeah uh, we started it but uh, we got error at the last minute so we have uh, dropped that okay so could we were you tell uh, me about uh, which uh, exact thing did you were you implementing like which exact uh, technology in generative ai so uh, which means the text uh, text generation sir like i mean uh, by, like let me give you an example for example you must have heard of gpt chat gpt gpt4 open ai yeah. text da vinci 3 models yeah. and other other models so yeah. anything like that so we tried of uh, gpt api and uh, it won't work out so we will be uh, started learning at that uh, uh, last 24 hours and uh, we'll be going further that all right so as we are in a time crunch we will be moving to the next project now uh, yeah, that's it from you. my side so. so next we have hybrid developers presenting grievance registration portal okay so we'll allow you to present the screen wait for a minute Uh, now you can present the screen. Yeah, sure. Just a second. I think there's some error. I'll fix it. Uh, is my screen visible? Oh, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, hello all, I am Tanmay Toshnewal and we are from the team Hybrid Developers. So basically we are from Chandigarh University and we are here to represent our project, uh, Grievances Re Registration Portal. So before coming up to the project, I would like to come up with the basic idea of how we got into the project. So the uh, one fine day when I was in my hometown, Jamshedpur, I saw that there were around 20 to 30 street lights not working and there was no uh, proper person or someone to report it. So I thought, let's not get it to the government portal website and just uh, register the complaint. So when I got into that, I saw that CP Grams is a portal where we can upload our complaints. So me being a tech student, it was very difficult for me to it, go log into that portal and complain it. So when I asked that question to myself, if I am not able to do that, or what if a layman or a simple man would want to do it? So no one would be able to do that. And this will create a huge difference between the government and the public. So we thought to bridge that gap and we thought that Hack Odisha, this hackathon, may be the right platform through which we can do so. So as we have had around 24 to 30 hours to complete this project, so we came up with the idea, we built UIs, we built wireframe, we built sketches, and at the end, we started developing the app Android application. 
So this application is based on Java, Android Studio. We have built UI using XML and Firebase for storing the data at local database. All right. So here is the uh, screen. Uh, is my uh, phone screen visible? Yes, it is. I guess sure. Uh, All right. So uh, we'll start with the login page. So welcome to the government complaint portal. Your one-step solution for raising concerns, registering complaints, and tracking their process with ease. Let's track their progress with ease. So let's walk up through the app's workflow and step by step. So to get started, open the app, click on the sign up button, and fill in your details, including name, email, and secure password. Once done, hit the register button. After signing up, you can access this page by clicking on the sign in button. Enter your registered email ID and password. Then press login. All right. So once you're logged in, so basically we had an home page in this previous this page, but we thought not giving the priority to home page as we had time constraints. So we gave priority to the main feature of our application, which was how to complete, how to file and complaint. So once we do that, uh, we have the complaint filing page. So after that, uh, you can put up the do department which you want to uh, complain it. You can put up the complaint you, you want to do. And the key feature which we are providing here, which no one else does, is that we are here we are using speed, uh, te image to text conversion. So basically, what you'll have to do is, uh, for any government portal, you'll have to go and give up your consumer ID, your Aadhaar card number, your address, your different details. So rather than doing it every time, every time you register a complaint, you'll have to just upload your bill picture. And once you do that, our AI, our ML model using OpenCV, we will just extract the uh, information which is necessary for us, like your username, your user number, and etc. And we'll give you the ed editing option too, because as it is a machine, there is always a scope of getting an error. So you can also edit it according to your preferences. And once you do so, you can get, and you can click on the submit button. So once it is done, it will get onto the admin portal. So in the admin portal, you'll get you'll get to see that how can admin accept or deny this situation. So once the complaint is registered, the admin will accept it, and then it will be automatically uh, given on the government portal. So right now, as we had time constraints, we have kept few things as a future scope. So right now, when we go to the Firebase, I'll also share you the Firebase right, uh, Firebase screen. Here you can see there is a complaint, and in this complaint, you can see the real-time data entry, greetings, and electricity. So after coming back to the home screen, we can go to this application, and we can submit it. And there will be a history, history page in which you will be able to see what all uh, complaints you have registered so far and what is the status of it. But due to time constraint, we have kept few things as a future scope. So first future scope of our application and a project is how uh, how and chatbot can actually do this thing for you. So we are we are going to implement a chatbot in this. There will be two kinds of chatbot. First chatbot, which will be interacting with the user, which he'll ask questions that if this is the query, in which department it is suitable that I should put up my query. And thus, he'll recommend the perfect department for it. And the second chatbot will work upon the backend side, in which the data which we have carried, we can simply take in and we can already get an automated entry in the government portal itself. So after doing so, you can easily log out from the application, not getting uh, security purposes. So once you do that, and once the chatbot is launched, we feel that this project might be a very good step for uh, it might make some difference in the humanity or in the government procedure. So thank you for choosing the government complaint portal. We are uh, here. Excuse me, your time is over for presenting. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was able. I was just going giving the conclusion. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for choosing the government complaints portal. We are here to simply uh, simplify the complaint registration process and improve government services delivery. Your feedback is essential for our mentoring and our upgrading process. So we are all yours, sir. And ma'am, uh, we are open to feedbacks and your questions, sir. Oh. Uh, so there are no questions for you. Uh, so we'll be moving on to the next uh, team. Sure. And from now on, everyone will have a strict six minutes time limit. No one is allowed to uh, surpass the time limit. Uh, Arjun, you can stop presenting your screen.
and now prasad will thank you ma'am okay hello everyone yeah am i audible if anyone can confirm yes you are okay yeah hi there everyone i am prashant patra organizer organizer at hack odisha hope you had a great hacking hour uh, time and you have built many more great projects that will make the world better uh, hello everyone and uh, my hearty greetings to the judges so moving on to the next project uh, uh, it is by sugam so and the name of the project is health plus so yeah yeah saswat raise the hand we'll be giving you screen share permission saswat meanwhile uh, if you can unmute your mic uh hello everyone i'm saswat and uh, yeah hello uh, now you have permission to uh, share your screen uh, yes please yeah all the best get started with your presentation thank you is it visible yeah 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 sir go ahead yes ashwat hello okay okay just give me a minute uh try now i guess yeah sasu the audible now hello your voice is your voice is not clear yeah actually uh, sophia was my teammate will be presenting uh, he will be taking the speech and uh, i'll be the presenting so he can unmute herself okay uh, tell him to so, raise his hand uh, so if you can raise your hand yeah yeah team give sofia after uh, the mic access okay sofia you can speak up yeah hello please do it fast guys you are unable to turn on your mic okay yeah yeah sofia and saswat uh Uh, as we are facing uh, facing issues with you so uh, just wait on a while uh, your team is now shifted to the end and you can speak with them if it's okay just uh, uh, send me a yes in the chat box fine okay so yeah uh, moving on to the next team the next team is byte coders and the uh, the name of the project is byte coders tumor prediction so anyone from the byte coders please raise your hand okay 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 yeah team give gorav das the access Okay, Gorav. Now you can unmute yourself and start your presentation. Gorav. Okay. 
Is that a problem? Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, Gaurav, you are audible. Start your presentation. All the best. Good evening. We are team Byte Coders. Our project is that we have created an AI model which will help to predict the outcome of MRI scans for the patients. Basically, the problem statement is that in India, we have only one doctor for around 800 people approximately, which gives the patient a long time to get the diagnosis and continue his medicines. So our model will help the patient get the diagnosis by uploading the images and then continue his further diagnosis, which will save some time and obviously his life in some cases. So here is the code. We have created the front end. Here is the main site. This is our landing page. We can insert any image and then click predict to get the images. This is the support page. We have given the contact information. The about us section redirects to our GitHub. And here's the contact when you can give suggestions and get in touch with us. Here we can select choose file and upload any image. Click predict. And this gives the output that the patient has melanoma. So this was our project. Uh, in future, we plan to add many more ML models along with this. So any questions? Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, you're audible. That was all. OK, so uh, I'll ask the core team members and the judges if they have any questions they can ask. Uh, could you uh, elaborate a bit more on the scope of the project? Like, uh, how far can you go? What are the things that you can do with this currently? So currently, we have only one ML model in the backend. But in future, we will add many more like X-ray scans or ECG scans. So any type of patient, not only for tumor prediction, but he can get his heart rate checked here. Or else, uh, let's say he has pneumonia. The X-ray scan can detect that, so it has it is scalable. This uses all right. Thanks. This uses a machine learning model. All right. Uh, was it a pre-trained model or did you guys train that? No, no. It it was trained. That that took the whole time. Or else we could have added many more models. The accuracy is around 90%, so it took a time to train. I'll wait for the next other users to ask some questions if they want. Right, since there's uh, no further questions, let's move ahead. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Gaurav. Uh, moving on to the next team, uh, we have Team Spark, 
and the name of the project is sgmeet any member of team yeah. i'm from team spark so yeah please. hi sanjay yeah you will be getting the green chip permission sir. just keep raising your hand okay. yeah so then you yes. now have the permission to share the screen all the best you can now go ahead is my screen visible and am i audible yeah you are I am Shujan Ghosh from Institute of Engineering and Management, Kolkata. This is my project for Hack Odisha, SC Meet, which is a real-time video conference software with end-to-end -end encryption and enhanced security. This is a similar software with other video conference software such as Zoom or Google Meet. So this is the sign-in button, which is actually a Google sign-in. So as at this moment, I am signed in with my uh, email ID. So it will not ask me again to sign in, but others in other scenarios it will ask to select a specific mail id and it will sign in the user with that mail id so this is one option start meeting which is a start new meeting option this is a video and microphone option i have turned it off because it will create glitches with the google meet video audio this is the share file uh, file sharing option if i choose file and share in a specific file here then it will be shared with the other uh, participants present in this meeting and if it is connected within a specific database, it can be Microsoft database or IBM database, then if the copy of that file will be automatically stored in that database in encrypted way because the file may be confidential which the, among the team members, among the meeting members. This is the whiteboard option. Uh, I can write anything. I can erase any specific part. And if I click clear board, then it will clear the whole board. This is the screen sharing option. There are three options, but at this moment I cannot share my screen because it will crash with the Google Meet screen sharing. And the difference with other video conference software is share system audio. In this software, I uh, any participant can also share his microphone volume with other participants. This is not present in other softwares, other video conference softwares. This is the screen recording option, similar like screen share. I can record in a specific window and I can record the whole screen. And if I click on share, it now it is recording my screen. And if I click on stop sharing, then it will stop recording and the file will be automatically downloaded to my local system. Sorry. <clears throat> and this is leave call. Now, uh, I have uh, displayed the start new meeting option. Now I will show how to join an existing meeting. So I will. So now let's say this is another user who wants to join a meeting. Your she will click Google sign in and your she will be signed in to this kinds of this kinds of interface. Now, each meeting will be consist of an unique code. So by using this code, only one can join the meeting. So I have to copy this code, click on join by ID. I have to paste this code, then I will click OK. So I have turned up video audio and only when the host will allow me to join, then only he or she will be able to join. I will click let in as a host. Now, this is the meeting information where the, there will be meeting ID. This can be copied from here. These are the participants as I am sharing my screen. So this is my screen option. And as I have joined it, both the cases with same mail ID. So same name is displayed. But uh, when uh, different users will join, all of their names will be displayed here. And this is the chat option. Uh, whenever the meeting is connected to any specific production database, then users, uh, then participants in this meeting can chat with each other. So let's say now the new user leaves the meetings. So he or she will be directed again to the home page. Now, there again, this is the host users. This is the time duration of the meeting will be displayed here. Uh, and now let's say the host users is also leaving the meeting. So now he or she will be again redirected to the home page. So these are the main functionalities. And actually, it is a scheduled meeting for later, but uh, there is a box, uh, some kind of that in this page. 
because, because most of the cases it crashes. So these are the main two features of my software that is start a new meeting and join by meeting and all the functionalities with enhanced encryption features. Thank you. Hi, Sujan. I have a one basic question from you. Yes. Uh, which meeting or this protocol you use for the online conferencing? Actually, uh, uh, at the tech stack part, I have used EJS extension, uh, EJS, uh, because that is quite faster. And in the image part that I have used in the scheduled meeting part, I have used vectorized image format because of the light load and the faster software execution part. And uh, the Google sign-in part, I have used Google Authentication API. And uh, that's it. And I have uh, some kinds, I have used some Tailwind library, and uh, majorly I have used React in the front-end designing part. So. That is the tech stack I have used in this project. Okay, one more thing. Where does the file is stored, which you like upload? You mentioned you can share files on yes. this file on the Yes, actually, uh, let's say in a production uh, production level, when it is connected to any specific database, let's say in a production level, uh, Microsoft is using it and it is connected to the Microsoft production database. Then uh, let's say this, I am sharing a specific file as in this meeting, as a user, I share a specific file with other participants. Then that copy of that file will be stored in the Microsoft database in an encrypted way because I've already told that no one except the meeting members will be able to see that file. Even a Microsoft employee will not be able to see it. So in an encrypted way, the file will be stored. So that's it. In production okay. database itself. One last thing. Like, uh, what will you do for the management of, for example, if you have millions of users on the, your app now? Yes. How will you plan to utilize your resources or the data you have, like you get limited storage on the database or the cloud, right? Yes, yes. So how are you planning to utilize that? Because if I upload a file today and post meet, uh, one hour post the meet, one of my meet members need to use that, but yes. might be one might be after 30 days of meet, no one really wants to use it and the files are simply lying on the server. So how are you planning to utilize that? How are you planning to flash the servers on a regular basis or things like that? Actually, uh, in production database or production server, there may be an auto deleting feature. Let's say after uh, 30 days or after 60 days or after six months, the files will be automatically deleted. And in the scalability part, actually, as I'm using uh, some free Google authentication version, so it may consist, I have tested that in the testing part, up to uh, eight to 10 members and a maximum five MB files can be shared. But obviously, whenever I'm using a good production system, good paid version of that, then automatically large file also can be shared. But obviously, there will be a limit because uh, let's say 100 GB file or 50 GB file cannot be shared, but the limit will be increased and more participants can use it at a time. So now at this moment, maximum five participants and maximum five MB file can be shared. But uh, actually, if there are six, seven participants, it can handle, but it will crash, crash sometime. So five participants will be handled very easily. Okay, thanks, Vijan. I won't take too much of your time. We may move to the next teams now. Okay. Uh, what a great show by Team Spark. Uh, now moving on to the next team. Uh, uh, the next team is Team Terra Nova, and the uh, the name of the project is uh, Project Off World. Uh, anyone from the Team Terra Nova, please raise your hand. Yeah, man. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Amit, now you have the uh, screen share access. Uh, all the best. You can go ahead. As you can see, our project is off world. It is basically. Amit, your screen is not shared, I guess. It's not shared. Okay. Uh, yes. Can you see it right now? No. Yeah, now it's visible. Yes. You can go ahead. Yes, off-world, it uh, basically means that um, in uh, near future, Earth might be inhabitable and we have to leave for other planets. So how can we know which planets are habitable? So we have created an uh, 
web page which has an uh, ai model integrated within itself and uh, we can predict and we can predict how how high the probability of its habitable habitability is and uh, we can uh, see that This is our website of world. Hello. Yeah, Amit, you are audible and visible. And we have uh, many authenticating key factors within our AI model, in, including imaging data, chemical analysis, radiation and thermal data, atmospheric data, sample collection, magnetism and plasma fields, which are basic data which can be collected from through satellite of any planet. But uh, currently, as we know, we have uh, limited data about Earth, Mars, Moon, Venus, Titan, and other smaller moons, etc. So for training the AI model, we needed uh, a huge amount of data, like nearly 700 uh, to uh, 600 to 700 planets, which we could not find the data. So we had to uh, recreate um, some manipulated data for uh, the AI model to train on, which is basically correlated to Earth statistics, which are uh, stated here. And our AI model basically runs through a logistic uh, regression model, as you can see here. We take the data and we just pu push the CSV file to the ML model, which, as you can see, uh, takes the data and uh, the model is trained according to the data and we can just take the satellite data of any other planet and it can uh, run the run the and the ml model can run the data through it and give out the probability of its habitability and why should we go to other planets because earth might be inhabitable in the near future and uh, as we can see, there are huge resources in the extraterrestrial uh, bodies as well. For example, we can see that there is huge uh, resources like mining on the moon. For example, we can mine for lunar ice, helium-3 or rare earth metals, which are essential for uh, human civilization to thrive on. And uh, that's it. Okay, man. Yeah, there is. Uh, you can go ahead with your questions if you have. Judges, uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead with it. Or we'll put, we'll proceed. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah, apparently we have no questions for you. Uh, what a great project, I mean, uh, all the best for the results. Okay, now we have a team DevWeb. Uh, the name of their project is Blood Compass. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Sayak. You will be getting the host access. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Just hold on for a minute. Yeah. Sure. Yes, I have. Now you have the access. Go ahead. All the best. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can you see my screen? No, it's not visible. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, sure. Yeah. So uh, our project is uh, Blood Compass. So, like uh, in in the time of COVID nineteen, we have faced a lot of uh, scarcity for the blood, right? And for that, uh, like we have seen people like sharing WhatsApp status with a requirement of bloods. Like they were even like they were even sharing them in Twitter in different social media channels, and all of them were inorganized. So we have came up with the solution called Blood Compass, and with this platform, we are like we are planning to map uh, blood donors with the blood receivers via a proper and verified blood request. And we are like we have everything set up to track the system too. So this is the landing page of our website. We have made this using the Fastend framework. So this is the basic about us page. And okay, this one is interesting. This is the open data. So we have followed a protocol. So basically, we were inspired by the Namayatri product by JustPay. So they have opened their product data, like how many data we have, like how, till when we have collected the data, how many users are there, how many donations are completed, because we want to, like we wanted us to be very transparent with the users. And if we go to the uh, login page. By the way, like the data that we just 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 watched, uh, so it was coming from our API only, so it is dynamic. So this is our main gateway to log into our dashboard. So by default, a user will be logged in or sign like he will be signed up as a receiver. So let us sign up to our receivers page. So if you do the login, this is the UI. So we for this map, like we are taking the geolocations from his browsers and. And this is the map like we are using op like uh, a open source map solution called Mapbox. And as you can see, here is only one nearby donor. And for the nearby blood banks, you can see like there are if you zoom out a bit. So yeah, like there are some nearby blood banks. Like this location is in Kolkata. So he is a like so by default he is not a donor. So he will see like want to be a donor. He can be a donor after some steps. Like if he clicks here, so he have to select like. Some of the blood groups like that he like that, that he has, and after that last donated on, it is not mandatory although, okay. And in the request tab, he can see how many requests he has sent till now, the blood request. So we can generate a blood request from here. Let us generate a blood request. Maybe like the plasma or a blood, both are same actually. Uh, okay, B plus. Maybe record on twenty first. Place of donations, the number of units, the blood requests, a phone number. Maybe he can like this is an optional field, emergency requirement or not. So I'm submitting the request. So as soon as we submit the request, the user like, ah uh, like a email will be triggered and he will get an email that your request has been submitted. So it is currently in the pending stage, right? Okay. So, so like we can also like trigger this thing here from here like. Uh, B plus blood group, he can submit. As soon as submit, it will be like applied for donor, and then from the admin panel, like from the super admin panel, we have to like verify him uh, for the donor. So let us now sign out from here and visit a, a donor page who like who is already approved as a donor. So this user has like re raised a request for donor, like to be a donor, and he has been verified. So he can see this go to donor dashboard. So he is all or, like he is also a uh, like a receiver also, like he can also send some request, but he is also a donor. So if we go to donor dashboard, he will see like this request are already there in his dashboard. Like I just made this request. Like you can see, this is on the emergency tag, and we will require this on twenty first, right? So maybe we will accept this one. So as soon as we accept this, it will take some time to load, and it will meanwhile send two emails, both to the user, I mean the receiver, and to the donor. That yeah, like. He has he has like raised this request and he has accepted this request, right? And suppose we have done with all the stuffs like the donor has donated blood, so he will see like market has completed. So 
we can like do it from here and after as soon as we click this it will not be treated as done because he needs to be like he needs the approval from the receiver's ends too so this like this this will be verified from both the ends so so again maybe we can go to the uh, receiver's page so the receiver will now see like his uh, his blood request status as active and he will see like an action like called market as complete so as soon as he clicks this so it will be fulfilled this 20 21st one it will be fulfilled right so this is how our platform works uh like this is like this is everything like this is the uh, like features that we have implemented till now so we have some future implementations like uh, due to the time limitations we couldn't done everything like hovering on the uh, anchors it will show the users location or maybe like hovering on to the uh to the like blood banks it will show the name those things are pending till now like we will integrate it soon and also we have implemented the google plugin for like language change so it was simple like two three lines of code but it does a like huge change to the like to the website so if we choose bengali it will like like within seconds it will change the whole code to bengali like it is like very feasible for both like for the hyper local hyper local region right so this is the like uh, stuff that we have made and we can like update the location because like it is not uh, getting updated automatically so we have to manually update the location every every time and we can also like edit the profile the basic stuffs are there uh yeah this was it and talking about the like the use case uh like coincidentally we just got and like a requirement of blood by our one of the professors in our college and like this is actually legit because it has came in our placement group so like today it has, like coincidentally today it just came in the 1133 that like someone needs a lot of ab positive yeah so like the problem is real and we have made kind of a solution like still this needs to be polished but yeah we have made it thank you hi sai I yeah. have a question for you. So, like, yeah, yeah. how do you implement backend of this app? I really like the idea and how you show the real life implications of the app. Really like that. Yeah. But, like, can you explain more on how you implement backend and how you implement the maps integration? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, basically, the map box is totally a the totally a like UI UI stuff. I'm take, talking about the backend. So, backend is made on Django and Django REST framework. so like we have created the model like the database schemas or the models uh, for the like for the users for the donors for the donors and the donor profile is also a reference a foreign key to the user so that way like we have made it and for the blood request also we have made a model or as like a database table so like we have uh, made some relations between the tables everything is related and then after after creating the schemas and relations in the database then we uh, like came to the further development of the apis and with the django rest framework we know that the api is like like developing the apis is very very simple that's why we chose this framework it is also a robust framework and talking like yeah and talking about the front end part so we are collecting the geolocation from the uh, from the browser like from the users browser and after we get the geolocation like the longitude and latitude like the, in the in the documentation of uh, map box we found that like Like it has a like so the front end is made with React, so it has a like the map box has a uh, what's it, a library uh, for the React. So we implemented that library, and we just have to pass that uh, that longitude and latitude as some props in that component, and by that like by like this is how it works. Okay, thanks, Zach. So we are yeah. running on okay. time time crunch now, so we may move to the next project. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, great project, Sayak. Uh, going uh, ahead with the next project, we have team blog uh, blog words. Uh, the project is decentralized voting. Hello. Yeah, Aranya. Can you please raise your hand? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, now you have the access for presenting. Okay, okay, okay. All the best.
Is my screen visible? Yeah, you are visible. Okay. So this is our project uh, for Hack Odisha 3.0, which is decentralized voting. The advent of decentralization, I think, is needed in many domains right now. And I feel that the use of blockchain is needed in voting. If you take an example of a polling booth or, or like a physical booth, there is a polling booth and uh, there is a chip that actually stores the votings. And if anyone tries to tamper, anyone can actually tamper with the chip and they can actually influence or change the data of the votes that have been casted. So it can be done. So in order to remove those atrocities, so we are actually implementing the decentralized voting system where the data is secured by the blockchain technology, which focuses on security, tamper proof and transparent ledger, where every transaction, that is the votes, are being recorded and can be accessed by any other external cannot be accessed by any other external entity so this is our project and this is the landing page of our project so why do we actually need to do need to use decentralized voting these are the these are some of the main points that actually reflects our project proof of work peer to peer network and transparency every transactions are actually being hashed and stored in the blockchain so the risk of uh, risk of security breaches like data be, data leaks and vote tampering is diminished peer to peer network like there is no presence of third parties that can intervene in between two parties so yeah and the transparency obviously and here are our team members this is me obviously and uh, this is our full stack dev and this is our uh, Solidity smart contract dev who is actually assisting me in building the smart contracts and deploying and testing it. And this is our front end dev who is actually assisting the full stack dev. And if anyone wants to contact us, they can actually reach out to us like they can actually yeah, register their mail and name and leave any problems that they are actually facing or something. And let's go to the main page. So when we press this login button, we need to uh, give our name or any username. Then we need to press connect wallet. This will actually uh, get connected to MetaMask. And so here you can see my name and the contract uh, wallet address that I have actually connected through MetaMask. And this is our contract address here. And these are the voting parties that we can actually vote to. Like if you want to cast a vote to any of the parties, like if you click on the vote button, there will be a, a confirm vote button, button that we need to click again in order to confirm the vote. If you click on that, MetaMask will appear for the authentication. And if you confirm the transaction, then the voting will start. Like this. And it will take some time. And we have actually deployed it on the Polygon testnet, Mumbai testnet, I mean. And as you can see, that it has successfully been voted. And it has store the informations on the chain and we can actually click it and uh, the same contract address cannot vote again and it has it is showing that you have already voted you cannot vote again if we again click on this vote the metamask pop-up will not appear as we have actually voted we cannot vote again with the same contract address or as what happens in the physical process we cannot vote twice so this is our project Hi, Aranya. I have a basic question. Okay. Uh, so, like, how does how the voting exactly works on the blockchain? Like, do you have a smart contract that it interacts to? Or yes, yes, I have a smart contract that interacts with the front end part of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we actually interact with, through the voting uh, vote button, the information or the 
on click button gets traveled through the blockchain gets interacts with the blockchain and sends the transaction through in form of hash into the ledger and the blockchain ledger stores that hash yeah i got that like that is the blockchain stuff you don't have to deal with that mm. one more thing like how do you ensure that like first okay i'll break it into two questions how many people are allowed to vote in your app like is everyone allowed to interact with that contract or there are a limited number of people no everyone can actually interact with our contract and we are actually on the testing phase so we need to test our app with more uh, dynamic people group of people we need to actually use them through it everyone can actually vote it there's no issue to it just they need to have a metamask account metamask wallet in order uh, through which they can actually interact with the app or the blockchain ecosystem okay so as far as my knowledge goes you can just create okay. n number of accounts because like creating an account is just a mathematical function of creating a private key and a private key yes. can make a its public key and you can have a new account so once like someone knows how to do it anyone can breach it like i can make 1000 accounts in a minute and give 1000 number of votes so like your app can be easily bypassed so what i think is you should go with a approach of making a decentralized autonomous organization yeah, yeah. and give yeah. people a single token which they may be spending upon voting yeah yeah it's actually correct uh, and uh, we cannot actually make a dao within 36 hours of hackathon right so we just actually uh, make you can like there are tools available for that yeah i know but actually i Uh, implemented the smart contract and there was no time to do those things actually okay with the smart contract approach to like you can make a contract for erc20 tokens and just give yeah. every voter one token and have like get the information with the token for example if i am giving back that token i am also sending a message that which part that i am voting to for example on top we have tmcp so if i want i'll give that information along with the token so that will be considered that one vote and also you have a contract that cannot be breached or cannot be bypassed okay 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 got it okay arun thanks for presenting thank you sir yeah a great idea aranya uh, now we have team dev pirates with the project nutrifit yeah aranya uh, yeah am i audible yeah you are audible just wait for a sec yeah now you uh, you are able to share your screen please go ahead all the best okay thank you so is the screen visible yeah it is yeah so good evening everyone uh, we are team dev pirates and we we all are from jadavpur university so in this round we are going to present our project nutrifit that is a health boosting application so where user can track their daily food intake set their weight goals and track their daily workouts also and also can share their share their fitness stories so the intention behind creating this website was to provide the insights of their of the users daily intakes about everyone so nowadays majority of the people are not healthy and energetic so unhealthy lifestyle and food intake are the main key reasons for this situation so keeping in mind all this fitness concepts nutribit was designed and developed so let's see all the components here so uh, in in the nutribit it has a very user friendly interface uh, so let's go jump into the login facility so here if the user is new to this uh, nutrifit website they have to sign up here but i have a account at first i have created an account so i just want to log in for faster performance so i am logging so it is the so after that so after uh, writing the username here the user have to set the password here so i am entering my password and now the after successful login so user will go into the profile page first 
and i am i want to mention one thing here in this uh, logging portion i i have built the logging using the json web token authentication jwt authentication and i have used the password in hash format in our database so if the password is also hacked so there is no issue the the hacker cannot get the confidential data there so after uh, logging here, the user can uh, can get a, a page for their track your meals page. So wh where the user can track their meals, uh, like in the track your food page, there are um, um, there are some some components like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Here user can uh, check their breakfast uh, details, like the macronutrients information about their uh, breakfast details, like. Currently, all the details are not filled. I am uh, now filling some data, like one plate fried rice here. So everything will be updated here. One plate fried rice and one uh, one plate chili chicken. So the user can track the macronutrients information of the breakfast data. So here it will generate some data of the breakfast, and user also. So it will just taking some time for the updating portion. And here also the food log will be visible. And here one progress bar will be visible for the last seven days. So it will just taking some time. Yeah. So actually, currently it is showing that 363 calorie is uh, total it is taken. And we can also view the details of the breakfast. The breakfast data set. So here in this page, the all the data will be visible of the breakfast. Currently, it is just taking some time actually to retrieve the data from the MongoDB database. I have uh, stored the data in the MongoDB database. And for the uh, macronutrients information, I have used one API that is uh, Calendar Ninjas API. And here the details of the fried rice and chili chicken are uh, fried rice and chicken are uh, visible. So here also the uh, food log is visible, and here the last two days data are visible here, the uh, 10 September and, and the today is the 11 September. And next, uh, there is one set your goals page that in this page the user can set their weight goals. Uh, like I want to set my weight goal uh, like 70, 70 kg, and in uh, I want to. Uh, I am actually my current weight is 76 and I want to uh, try to uh, lose lose some weight like six weight I want to lose and I want I my target weight will be 70 kgs and I want to reduce this weight in five months so after submitting this data my weight goal will be set and this will be my daily calorie budget in 290 is 2906 calorie and it is it will be also visible in your profile page that is in the uh, goal section like i you have to uh, my goal is i have to lose six kgs in some months so again uh, again in there there is a one page for exercise where the user can uh, burn out some calories like uh, uh, using cycling or yoga or aerobics anything else so i want to show something like using cycling so here user can choose any options like cycling less than 10 mph and uh, uh, someone is cycling for 20 minutes so it will calculate the total burnout calories in 20 minutes uh, using cycling so i can also use uh, add my, this in my total calories so this is the portion that is burned uh, today by me so this is the excess portion and also user can share their fitness stories by with others users like i and the like someone and if someone has in, someone has shared their stories, they are, it will be visible here. And I have uh, shared my story, so that is visible in this portion also. So you can also view in full screen portion. Yeah, and then uh, at the end there is a settings portion. There the user can update their profile informations. Here if the user also user can change their password and delete his account or also log out from all the sessions. If the user has logged in, in from mobile or any other devices, he can actually directly log out from all the sessions. And here user can update and at the end the user can also log out from here. So this is the whole project of ours.
Okay, I didn't know. Uh, yes, if you have any questions, you can go ahead. Yeah, is there any questions? So your project seems quite a lot like uh, something like a healthify me. I used healthify. Yeah, yeah, healthify is in uh, there is also similar kind of features, but there is I think uh, there is no uh, fitness fitness sharing uh, section or there is no burnout calorie burnout uh, section also. So. Uh, calorie burnout where you mentioned what the exercise and how much calorie it will burn, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I believe they had that implemented. Okay. okay. So I have you. No okay, okay. So I, I'm not sure actually. So. Okay. Yeah, totally. It's all right. Yeah. The the resemblance was quite a lot, so I had to mention that. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Uh, okay. You said you implement. Uh, how did you implement the backend of this application? Could you repeat that? Yeah. So in the backend, I have uh, created a Express server, and for the database, I have used a NoSQL service, NoSQL database that is MongoDB. And um, for the authentication, I actually implement this using JWT tokens, and I have stored the tokens in the cookies also, and also I have stored uh, the cookie in MongoDB database. Uh, actually, I have a plan to log out from all device, and so for that reason, I actually store the token in my MongoDB database also, so that uh, if the user want to log out from all session, then he can. And actually, at that time, I will just want to clear the token ID from the database. All right, makes sense. That was great. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll let others have a few time if they want to ask the questions. And uh, if not, let me okay. proceed. Actually, here is also some limitations from our side. Like here, uh, the image section. Actually, many portions you can see that uh, the pages are loading a lot of time. Actually, in the image, I actually stored the image in base sixty four format in our database. Actually, this uh, portions can also be, this uh, portions can be, these limitations can be reduced using some other AWS services or any other cloud ordinary services. We can also use. Actually, currently. We are running to some time, so we have just uh, stored the image data in base 64 and just stored the string in MongoDB. We know that uh, it is a very bad, bad uh, code. Right, but, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, that's it from my side as of right now. Okay. Uh, Okay, I believe there are no further questions, so we can move to the next project. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I Thanks, yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, I remember definitely that was a great project. Uh, going ahead, we have uh, the binary uh, the project uh, lecture lens. Yeah. Okay, Sarthak. You can unmute and we'll be giving you the access. Yeah, Sartre, you can now share your screen. Go ahead. All the best. Yeah. So hello, everyone. This is the team binary. Old system involves an annual feedback mechanism. But it's a very old method of getting feedback from of the faculty, presenting to you lecture lens, a modern faculty rating system. So our solution is an easy to use platform des designed to facilitate students' ability to submit rating of the faculty member. We, uh, it has a various uh, key features, such as anonymous rating system. This allows students to provide honest and unbiased feedback about their faculty members. Second is monthly rating system. Unlike traditional method, this frequent feedback loop can provide faculty member with real time insight into their teaching method and make making it easier for them to adopt and improve rewards for top faculty this could involve include recognition monetary incentive and other form of appreciation so this is 
the home page of our website student can first log in here by using their college registration number or the roll number and the password which will be provided to them after login successful login they can select the department the semester in which they are and the group or the class in which they are then the list of the faculty teaching them will be displayed in front of them clicking the name clicking on the name they can rate the faculty on the various methods like faculty interaction teaching quality provide providing material after submitting this data gets stored in the databases then then our next feature is the top list the top few the top three faculty get intense uh, rewards and recognition by this that's it okay sadhu okay sadhu that was great um, could you elaborate like uh, what data do you store when someone submits the feedback uh, pardon okay you showcase the slider thing right where yeah. someone was submitting feedback all right whenever you submit the feedback uh, what data do you store in the uh currently we are storing the average of the all the okay for example uh, all the five sliders were at let's say two and one of them was at five the average would be stored something like 2.1 or something yeah average of them okay so won't that uh, not be a good metric because uh, in the end you would have to judge the teacher by various pointers right so yeah let's currently say, actually let in, yeah current solution yeah, doesn't please. store that but uh, uh, i've thought of storing that but uh, currently i have, it is not sure okay that's all right uh, if you had thought of that um could you just uh, roll back to the page where you had the ranking system enabled yes one second okay so uh, if the rankings of teachers is publicly available so i mean this is just a personal thought uh what if some uh, someone decides to threaten their students to come at the top of the list like you have any mechanism about it or have you thought of that i just want to know not like you have implemented yes, that yes uh, i have thought of I've some thought. technique like if suddenly uh, some teachers rating is increasing or decreasing uh, in a short period of time then we can report it or something like for review it mm-hmm. all right uh okay makes sense uh, all right that's it from my side as a try now uh, i have no further questions uh okay one last question i just thought of that uh, what is a text like that you have used like what is in the back end box in the front end i can see that you have been used yes uh, the whole thing is running on the php and for database mysql okay so you have a locally hosted mysql server right now yes uh, i am using xam server all right makes sense okay i believe uh, there are no further questions so we can move to the next project okay thanks thank you thank you so much
Yeah, hello. Yeah, thank you, Sartar, for showing in our project. Uh, next, we have Team Sugam Saw. Guys, if you can re with their project, uh, help us. Yeah. Yeah, Sophia and Sasu. So our team will be giving you both the post access. Am I audible? Yes, Sophia, you are. Shashwat, can you share the screen? Yeah, I'm sharing. Sorry about the inconvenience earlier, right? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, Shashwat, your screen is great. All the best, guys. Go ahead. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Sophia. Have you ever imagined a world where healthcare is seamlessly connected, effortlessly accessible, and digitally transformed? Today, we'll unveil the future of healthcare with our groundbreaking app, which is Health Plus by Benefits, our team. We are a group of four members. The problem statement. The prevalent use of handwritten medical prescriptions and reports has led to inefficiencies and significant risk due to illegible documentation, resulting in reading difficulties, delay treatments, compromised patient safety, and hindrances in effective communication within the healthcare system. To address these challenges, our solution is to develop user-friendly mobile application that enables doctors to input medical information digitally. This app will securely store all the medical prescriptions and reports while providing patients with seamless access to their medical history. Moving on to the prototype of our app. Um. So I just want the prototype. Uh, is my screen is visible right now? Yes, sir. Okay, so our app is basically, as Sophia said, it's to address the problem of uh, storing the, the uh, 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 privileged way to, of this, uh, to avoid the privileged way of storing prescriptions and the medications. So, going through the, our uh, prototype. So this will be the sign. We have two parts in our uh, app. That the first one is the for the patients, and the second one is for the doctors who can write, upload, download, and write their patients for a prescription, and they can prescribe them as per. So I'm going to the patient part. So we'll be taking a gender, their age, their BMI, and uh, any medical conditions they have and the allergies they have. Then moving to the home page, we have some of the main features such as scanning the prescriptions, uploading the prescriptions, download the prescriptions, and uh, to provide the medications to the patients that they can remind set reminder for their medications. So let's uh so to the we have a section for scan the prescriptions and the reports will be stored in the database that they can download and uh, all the reports they, they can see that the doctor has, has been uploaded to that particular product user and we have search options for it so that it can be feasible for, for them to search for any prescription they want and uh, moment reminder thing and it's the medical uh, med schedule that will you can schedule the medicines beforehand and we will be giving you the reminders in the beforehand for uh, the taking uh, the med med medications and this app uh, will, will also have the profile section for the doctors as well that they can uh, um uh, uh what part, uh, i guess the way to just move into that part uh, yes, for the doctors, they have to verify their medical certificates to uh, access this app uh, for them uh, to prescribe someone to access their patients. And after that, they can upload, download, or write report on the app. Yeah, the uh, right report, they have to input the patient's name, 
email and phone, then we'll, we'll be giving it. So there will be a OTP that the patients will be brought uh, then, then the doctor will have to input that OTP to prescribe the, uh, that particular patient. So the doctor can easily prescribe here and this prescription will directly, directly go uh, 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 send to that particular patient. And this is all about the core features of our app and uh, in the future aspects we have uh, something called like uh, we have uh, some map we have some features that we have in the future aspect that is uh, we will use the locations of the patients to provide them uh, the nearby pharmacies and uh, the hospitals and the doctors that are nearby to them and uh, um, and they can like we can give them the uh, some of the recommendations for medicines, the similar recommendations to the medicines they are using. And the business model uh, will have implemented like uh, will be charging some commissions from the hospitals that will be listing on our app for uh, to advertise their hospitals and the doctors that the services they are providing. There, and there will be no cost for the user. And the uh, user range of this app will be from the young to old age. Because, uh, it will be better for, and the UI is quite simple for uh, for the youth. The older age generations because they have uh, they have some issues by operating through the app. So that's all uh, by me. Any questions you have? Hello? Yeah, okay, sir. Good morning. Hi, uh, your voice is not reachable. Yeah, yeah, sir. So just hold on uh, while our judges curate the questions. Hey, hey sir. Yeah, hello. Uh, so, you guys. Um, Presented a Figma prototype here. So, did you guys actually work on the application in this hackathon or what was the case? Yeah, we have actually uh, um, uh, made an application out of it, but that or that was up to the uh, upload and download a post part, and you know, and that we have used Firebase and uh, Android to get Firebase to. Uh, Firebase for the user authentication and uh, Android Studio for to develop the app. That's okay. So since you guys didn't uh, actually display the application here, let me just ask: uh, How much portion of what you demoed here will be actually working in the application that you have built? Uh, Sudam and Vivek they are the, in the lead of developing the application. Hello. Uh, can I? Hello. Can I give this answer? All right. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, for application, uh, we have completed up to seventy percent, and our app is working seventy percent. The features are working seventy percent, and thirty percent uh, is not been done yet, and we will be implementing in, in the future. And all okay, we will I'll also just, uh, include ML understand. model in it. Uh, since uh, I mean I can't really understand by percentage, right? Could you just uh, list down like these things work and these are in progress or in the pipeline? Don't work as of right now. That would be more understandable. Like I can't really crunch on what seventy percent and what thirty percent means. Okay, seventy uh, percent means like uh, we have we have created a login page for customer as well as for the doctor and both can interact with each other they they can doctor can upload the images of the prescription or uh, write it down the medicines recommended to that customer and customer can take it uh, and can customer can log into the given mail id and see their prescriptions as well as the medicine recommended by the doctors this is been done by the uh, our side and leftover part is like the schedule made a, um, scheduling of times and and more features are to be added 
and we have used firebase for storing all the databases and our authentication part is also been done in firebase uh all right that's okay any more questions um, okay just a second uh, all right do you uh have the application in hand okay i don't think we can have another demo so we should move forward okay thank but, you yeah that was a great project so so um and it yeah uh we ha uh we have just uh, a high idea of this project but i was been experiencing from my day to day life that my grandmother was just having this issues when she travel to a doctor and she was carrying all the prescription in her, in her hand giving to me arranging them or them all it was very much complexity and if if it is a emergency purpose it may create a uh, it may accidentally create a hamper to that person also so that we have implemented this app so that it can collect all the prescriptions from the birth to the uh, to the end of the life and it can also uh, we can also store it and we can see it anywhere from anywhere anywhere from the app and we can access it anywhere in the world and it can be handled in just in a uh, second was well, like yeah that's quite great i love the idea of having uh, the medical record stored and all that although uh, we do have things like that actually in real life or that are not that much accessible as of right now i believe but they do exist anyways let's not uh, spend too much time on your project we have to move forward okay, as well thank you thank you thank you yeah thanks okay okay thank you uh, thank you team so and so uh, so uh, guys we have now exhausted all the team we have in, we have in the list any one of you if uh, you want excuse to... me uh, we were also in the list team coding night and i would week. also like to present okay okay you can uh, definitely you can just uh, the one of you who want to uh, uh, present the project please raise your hand okay so what's your side do any more of you guys uh subhashish should be presenting and i'll be giving the presentation i'll be pitching we okay, just can you let me know your team name uh we are team coding night and we were like last in the list okay okay it's great uh, i supposedly have a bad list yeah? uh okay uh, team coding night you can go ahead with your uh, presentation out uh, just uh, the one who will be sharing the screen please raise your hand Suvasis, it is Suvasis, right? Okay, okay, Suvasis. So our team will be giving you the screen share access. So just hold on for a minute. Okay, Suvasis. So now you have the access to share your screen, I suppose. Hi, this is Team Coding Night, and we have recreated the Nandan Kanan Zoo from Odisha. So, the zoo in Odisha is home to a diverse range of wildlife, but many people can't visit it in person due to geographical limitations, time constraints, and or physical disabilities. Moreover, natural disasters, lockdowns, and other restrictions also hinder access to this natural wonder. Wildscape, our virtual reality zoo, addresses these issues head on. With the launch of Apple Vision Pro and Oculus Quest. Virtual reality is emerging to be the next big leap in tech. Wildscape offers a lifelike, interactive, and educational experience. Here's how it works. So it has an immersive environment. Users can step into the virtual recreation of Nandan Kanan Zoo, complete with realistic animal habitats, lush landscapes, and informational exhibits. So we have realistic animals, and we have recreated the animals in high fidelity using Unreal Engine. And they are also powered by AI, which offers a wide range of animations and interactions. Visitors can also get up close to them and admire the beauty without any danger. 
Apart from that, it's not just a sightseeing tool, it's also an educational tool, offering users the opportunity to learn about the animals, their habitats, the conservation efforts that go into them. By, and we are, we are also inclusive. By using virtual technology, we have made the zoo accessible to everyone, regardless of their physical location or mobility issues. So as with every major project, the business model is extremely crucial. So we have a sustainable revenue model. The zoo can charge a small fee for an immersive tour with, and with the huge number of virtual guests, it can really bolster the, the economy and the revenue can be reinvested into the conservation efforts. It also has a significant social impact. We will foster a love for wildlife and environmental conservation through the immersive education. And it all and Wildscape ensures that everyone, regardless of their circumstances, can connect with nature and wildlife. On to the future scope. Uh, we had also planned a few more features, but due to time constraint, we weren't able to implement them. So our zoo currently has five to six species, but the actual zoo is home to over 30. So we are planning to expand and add the remaining species, which will allow us to explore the full diversity of the zoo from the comfort of our home. We, are, we will also add an AI narrator. And as we approach each enclosure, the narrator will engage us with facts about the animals, their habitats, and the conservation efforts. This can also be extended uh, to other zoos and natural wonders, so the possibilities are endless. Wildscape solves the real problem, has a viable business model, and makes a positive impact, and it is redefining the future of eco-adventures. So that will be it, and we are open to questions. Yeah, great, great Abhi. That was quite a nice one. Quite a different project from all the other ones that I must say. Thank you. Uh, all right. Okay, so first things first, I wanted to ask, you mentioned AI, like how did you implement or where have you used AI in this project? So we have used an, uh, AI in majorly two uh, situations. So first is the path planning. So each enclosure has their separate collision with the ground plane and the fencing. So we are basically using the AI so that the animal can move inside the enclosure, but it also does not collide with the fences or with other animals in the same enclosure. Also, we have also implemented in the animation, for example, if it's close to a tree or something, it will also have a grazing animation for that. All right, uh, did not expect that, but that's okay. Mostly because uh, I have seen these things implemented without such AI tools. So I'm not sure how that helped or could you let me know uh, how exactly did you implement the AI things? Like, uh, is it a model or is it something no, it's we basically just uh, Unreal has a scripting script editor. So we have basically just added the collisions. We have basically created a voxel map and we've added the collisions from the fences and the ground plane and the other animals. So what that does is basically the AI can calculate the viable paths because we have we have a voxel path of the of the all the obstacles and the available space. So it can plan around that and it can move around as you can see right now. And the grazing animations we just felt would make it a bit more immersive. Yeah, that does seem a bit better than what I, uh, since you hadn't explained that part. Okay, you also mentioned quests, I believe. Uh, what were you planning around that? Uh, so basically, we have chosen Unreal for, we also had a host of other game engines, but we specifically chose Unreal because of two reasons. Uh, one, uh, because obviously it has text such as Nanite and Lumen, which makes it, uh, we can have great performance while also maintaining the visual quality. And secondly, it can easily be ported to virtual reality. Uh, so like Oculus, we can port this application and it will be compatible with Oculus Quest, which is like currently the most popular VR headset on the market. All right, all right, makes sense. Okay, um, could you uh, 
also explain a bit about your process of building this like when did you start when did you have the idea uh, so and we, how it all came around so honestly we wanted something unique something that would reconnect us with nature so we thought uh, so we also thought that it's about orissa so we thought why not recreate the zoo it's like maybe one of the most popular attraction there so we thought of recreating that so we started yesterday and we like sketched out the the entrance gate i made that entirely in blender yesterday and we also sketched out the basic layout of the area like we have added six enclosures for deer zebra lion crocodile hippos and uh, crocodiles so those are the six enclosures so we sketched that out yesterday and today we recreated in it in unreal and we added all the fencing the collisions and all the foliage from the quixel assets and we also added the animations and hard coded the ai today so it took the entire process took around one and a half days hmm. almost described our hackathon timeline which is 36 hours yep that's about technically one and a half day yeah so yeah makes sense all right okay uh, i won't be asking any more questions other right now let's move forward since okay, thank we you. are already over you yeah thanks a bit man that was quite unique thank let's you move Okay, uh, hackers. Uh, do you have do you have any more presentation left? Yes. Okay, Adil. Uh, yeah, Adil, uh, you are the one who will be presenting, right? Uh, yes. Okay, definitely, Adil. Uh, okay, will... just to just to uh, stop you here, Adil, uh, were you the one who did not fill the form, right? Yes. Or was it the sub? Yes. Yes. All right, makes sense. Just to try wrapping up uh, a little fast because we are already oh, much overdue. So we'll try. Okay, to okay, okay. Sure. sure. Take it. Okay, so, sure. Okay, Adil, now you have the access to uh, share your screen. All the best. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are Hashbots, and this is our webs. This is our website, Digiskip. This is a DeFi platform which enables a user to avail the benefits of all the schemes and scholarships listed by the government of India for which uh, he or she is eligible. Like for suppose uh, our aim, uh, I will shut the aim. Uh, our aim of our project is availing schemes and incentives to rightful citizens, providing a decentralized platform, reducing the time of transaction by instant payments, and reducing manual works and possibility of errors. Mm -hmm. So our scheme, this is our website. And um, uh, like for suppose I want to explore all the schemes and scholarships listed out by the government of India. Uh, I can explore here. These are all the schemes and scholarships listed by the government of India. So if I want to see uh, uh, in which schemes I am eligible, so I have to connect my wallet here, which is the login criteria for my website. Uh, it will trigger the database uh, and it will bring the data of the user and it will uh, query with the criteria which is embedded in my smart contract. Uh, so let's begin the process. Like I am sub uh, connecting my wallet here. <coughs> Wait. Uh, I will connect this wallet. Uh, uh, this wallet is a, of a user who is a female and is a student from Bhuvneshwar who has no income stream. So let's put ourselves in her shoes and see which other schemes she is eligible for. And here it is the eligible schemes. For the, uh, for the user are the Youth Empowerment Scholarship Program and the Shiksha Shakti Yojana, Girl Power Scheme. So these are the two scholarships in which she is uh, eligible. So if uh, she wants to explore the uh, first one, 
like uh, she checks the eligibility criteria and the benefit seems very good to her like uh, and uh, she is very much interested in applying this so she can instantly apply for funds here is a note our smart contract contains all uh, contains the funds so it gets instantly transferred to the user's metamask wallet here is a demo when she apply for funds click apply for funds the metamask pop up creates like uh, uh, firstly i want to show the user's balance in the wallet account wait i want to show what uh, in what balance ah huh. this is the balance 0.4885 sepolia uh, so when she apply for funds Okay, okay. Yes, uh, this uh, this is the uh, pop up where the transaction will be proceeded. Uh, when she clicks apply for funds, this pop up gets created, and the uh, we have deployed uh, uh, the allotted benefit, allotted money or the benefit which is uh, uh, for the scheme. And when we confirm this, like this, so the hash ID is generated for for which the transaction is proceeded, and. Uh, the funds which will be which is allotted for the scheme it will get transferred to the user's metamask wallet like there's a notification like uh, 0.5 f is transferred confirm transaction transaction is confirmed view and sepolia we can view this transaction in uh, the website sepolia ether scan like these are the details and it is saying 0.5 f is transferred so if we check the metamask wallet what's the balance here after the benefit is consumed it's 0.9885 so you can clearly see the 0.5 f money which was uh, allotted for the scheme was instantly transferred to the user so this is our um, website and i would also like to show you something like uh, she's uh, she has applied for the youth empowerment scholarship program if we go back and uh, she checks eligible scheme yeah. only one scheme will be uh, shown because the first one which uh, she has applied for she has already get, got the benefit so the other scheme is now showing uh, similarly she can avail the benefit benefit for this this one also and uh, so this is our project i would also like to um uh, say how i got this idea like uh, like we i was i just passed my first year and uh, in my first year there were uh, numerous scholarship and scheme which was given to student like i was eligible uh, later on in my in now i got to know that i was eligible for the minority scholarship and uh, and also a merit scholarship which i don't didn't got to know and i missed a lot of benefit which could, i could have got so i thought of a platform where the, all the eligible schemes and scholarship scholarship will automatically will be displayed on our platform like querying the database and scheme criteria and easily the schemes would be uh, displayed so we i have just built that it, uh, so it avails the user to get their deserved rights the deserved uh, scheme, benefits of the schemes and scholarship is uh, by the government of india uh thank you and this is our thank you for our time judges and we are open for questions hey adil how do you ensure that one has applied to the one schemes how do i ensure one has, like i am uh, i didn't got the question can you okay so if there are two schemes and for example you have applied for one of them so as you displayed like mm -hmm. the other scheme will only be displayed like when you applied won't show up next time so how does mm -hmm. that happen uh okay oh, one minute
Hello, am I audible? Yes. This is my teammate Ashirvan. He will explain. Okay, so basically our smart contract has a mapping which maps all the addresses uh, to a boolean value. So when a person avails the benefit, uh, their boolean value of, of their address it gets changed to false. So if the boolean if the bo if if the boolean value for ad for their address is false, they are not eligible for that scheme. Okay, so every time the scheme page loads up, so are you making a read contract call to read the value if, whether it is true or false? Yes. Okay, so doesn't that make your uh, mechanism inefficient or slow? Yes, but uh, we could also use uh, help layer two solutions like optimistic rollups or side chains which could you know make those processing faster okay okay thanks. any more questions We are done. Yeah. Yeah, Adil and uh, Shiva, you are done. Thank you. Okay. Well, well, well. Uh, so now we are done. Now, guys, we are done with all the projects our team has. Yeah. Now we are done with all the projects our team has to focus. What a great show of talent they have shown. And uh, yeah, with this, we are ending Hack Odisha 3.2 officially. Thanks to all the organizers, uh, organizers behind the Hack Odisha 3.2, especially WebBiz and IT Rockwilla, all our community partners, all our sponsors, and all the hackers, we, all the follow ha fellow hackers we had in this event. And uh, a reminder for you guys, the projects uh, which we so uh, showcased uh, right now were not the top 10 or not uh, uh, anything top. Uh, they are uh, they are the ones who volunteered to showcase their uh, product in front of you. All the projects submitted uh, will be judged accordingly and will be uh, will be judged uh, properly. And we will get to the winner announcement soon. So yeah, until uh, until that time, hold uh, like just sit tight for the winner announcement. And uh, with this, I officially announce the end of Hack Odisha 3.2 a great uh, uh, what a great applause to uh, all of them who uh, submitted their projects who work day and night hard to make this event successful and yeah so with this i am prasad patra signing off meet you soon in the next edition bye guys Hello.